The following presentation contains content that some individuals may find sensitive or distressing. Hello, listeners. Welcome back to Fables from the Forgotten. I'm delighted to have you with us as we embark on another spellbinding tale. But before we begin, I want to extend a heartfelt thank you. Your enthusiasm and feedback inspire us to bring you more intriguing stories. If you're enjoying our fables, please consider supporting us by liking this episode, subscribing to our podcast, and dropping a comment to let us know what you think. Now without further ado, let's venture into the shadowy realm of our next fable, The Lich. A foul scent fills the air of rot and ruination. Patrons scatter quickly. A visitor has arrived at the crossover, and his dark presence may even make the keeper squirm. Not in fear, of course. I would never say our master and mistress would be afraid, but they may be wary. He stretches across the table, his rotting teeth hanging by a thread, exposed sinew wrapped tightly around his skull. What shall his story reveal? What comes near? A deathly delightful soul, finally in need of my judgment. Now, now, my dear, you're far too eager. Let our patron speak before you sentence him to damnation. (laughs) Damnation, you must be mistaken. I am no ordinary mortal. I suppose you Eternals already know that, with your unbound knowledge of the realms. How oddly knowledgeable you are of this world. Many few have wandered into our tavern and recognized us for what we truly are. I am a keen observer. After all, one cannot overlook power when it stands in front of you. A sweet-talking sorcerer. I shouldn't be surprised. Lich! Excuse me? I am Bedlam, the Lich. (laughs) A Lich, but not powerful enough to cheat death forever. While I do enjoy your venomous nature, Bedlam has a story to tell, dearest. And I, for one, am inclined to hear it, even if he perhaps may not deserve it. Shall I do the honors? Go on. I have a feeling Aerith won't wait all day. There are very few nights I remember well. For when one lives almost an eternity... The days all tend to blur together, but I can say for certain, the moon was perched atop two thin clouds that evening. Its light shone onto my castle, littered with holes and cracks in the foundation. It weighed heavy on my heart that its once fierce and dominating series of towers were reduced to a single pillar barely holding up its own weight. I descended the staircase to the lower depths of the castle, where I kept a vast collection of trinkets and magical charms. A scepter that belonged to a long-dead warlord, the gargantuan claw of an extinct beast, and a book written in unknown language with stained tattered pages that hinted at a long, rich history. And you hoarded that wealth, as selfish creatures do. Am I telling this story, or are you eternal? (laughs) You are, unfortunately... Carry on before my love loses her patience. I suspect she already has, but very well. 
What took my attention was a small genie lamp, embellished in gold and purple. There are many creatures trapped in my hoard, but I prided myself on this one. Hello, Bedlam. Hmm, hello, spirit. My name is Zephipple. I will address you as I see fit. You'd be wise to be kind to a being that could kill you. Said the spirit, eternally trapped in a harmless little lamp. I tilted my head and gave the lamp a demeaning grin. It took a moment before a plume of suffocating smoke rocketed out of its opening. I lurched back. The smell, it was acrid, disgusting. I waved my arms around to dispel it and caught my clawed fingertips on a glass sphere in the corner. It crashed to the floor, sending splinters of glass everywhere. It was at that moment I had had enough of this spirit. I raised a finger to the air. The blinding smoke, the lamp ejected, swirled around, formed into a ball and gradually grew smaller and smaller. Before long it was reduced to an insignificant pebble of smoke. I flicked my finger toward one of the openings in the walls where the windows used to be. The sphere of smoke leaped outside and dispersed itself before fading into the air. I would have thought a creature of your intellect would be immune to petty tricks like that. Silence! I think you broke something. Oh no. I turned my gaze back over to the broken glass on the floor, and then to the golden stand that propped it up. Damn! Your phylactery, I assume? One of the few I still had left. What broke? I mulled over, telling the spirit the truth, but decided against it. I was quite vulnerable now, especially if I did not find another phylactery to place the remaining fragments of my soul in too soon, and it had proven to be untrustworthy. It was just a magic binding, keeping certain people under certain obligations. You know, deals with the devil and all that. Oh. Okay. Thankfully for me, the spirit seemed about as good at detecting emotion as it was expressing it. I took a deep breath, in and out. It was unfortunate I didn't have any servants to clean up the mess, but I was not useless. My arms formed into a broom and dustpan and swept up the broken glass. As I went to throw them out the same opening I'd sent the smoke through, I stopped in my tracks. The orange flames of torches weaved through the woods, leading to my castle. The echoes of the men singing a rhyme about burning witches made their intentions clear. And now there's this. Ugh! I had unknowingly transformed my hands back into their original state, crushing skin and glass alike in my fists. I turned back for a moment to look at the figures holding torches in the dark. Two robed figures stood in front of the crowd, dressed far too well to be commoners. Wizards. <laughs> Oh, well, perhaps this could be fun. Where are you going? 
I need to deal with those cretins. Ah, tale as old as time. Mortals have a habit of hating those who are different. I suppose you died defending your castle? Not exactly. As I picked out small shards of glass from the palm of my hand, I could already hear the men attempting to break down the gate leading to the courtyard. Already bored, I waved my hand to the door. It opened itself, allowing the men inside. They crashed over top of each other in an attempt to rush in. As they streamed in, they circled me with weapons. Some of them were common folk, with pock-marked faces and tattered clothes. Others had polished black armor, wicked swords pointed towards me. A woman with long, blonde hair strutted forward. Bedlam the Sorcerer! Lich. Bedlam the Lich. On my immortal soul, this is getting old. Bedlam the Lich. I am Dame Afrain. I have been personally appointed to bring you to trial for your crimes. The crowd of common folk drowned her out with roars of approval, raising pitchforks and sharpened knives. I raised a hand, and they were all silent. I nodded to the knight, giving her a smile. After all, I personally wanted to know what I stood accused of. Your crimes. The abduction of Duke Paylor's wife, Marianne. Multiple townsfolk claim they saw her reanimated corpse wandering your castle grounds. Dozens of stolen goods from cows, chickens and corpses to magical artifacts and chalices. And finally, the murder of the Archmage. We have witnesses from acolytes in the Mage's Tower that you imprisoned him and slowly tortured him to death. My smile widened. Most of them were blatant lies, half-truths. I had stolen nothing from these commoners, though I doubt they believe me upon trial. After all, whenever they needed a scapegoat for any crime, these corrupt half-wit mortals committed, they always blamed the Hermit Lich. But... I did enjoy ripping the Archmage apart. First, I pulled at his fingers, tearing at the muscles. And then I went limb by limb, cracking bones and splattering blood on his soft, velvet carpet. He could do nothing but scream and cry. As I restrained him magically, I allowed him to scream. I wanted it to be known that Bedlam the Lich had killed the powerful Archmage. After all, he was the only one old enough to know what I was before. Before chaos and ruin. Before the ever-gaping emptiness grew wider and wider and swallowed what was left of me before Bedlam the Lich. And what were you before you became a Lich? A wizard who studied hard for his position. A sorcerer that coasted on natural talent. Or a warlock that got his way by sleeping with his professor. I think you already know what I was, Eternal. Sorcerer? Le- uh, warlock. Uh, well, clearly we are all confused. We demand that you stand trial at the behest of the dynast himself. The dynast himself now. Before, it was just regents and dukes calling for my head. I suppose I've notched up a few pegs on your list of enemies. Make no mistake, it is no honor, beast. Before the knight could say another word, I merely raised a finger, 
blood splattered across the floor as her head rolled into the crowd. Lynch. You took that well. Well, how would you feel if someone called you something you are clearly not? I would have certainly decapitated them, my dear. Exactly. I believe she was talking to me. Perhaps. An assortment of limbs and heads strewn across the courtyard as I made short work of dismantling peasants and knights alike. Shredding through flesh and crushing bones, I left a pile of mangled bodies behind me. It was curiosity and necessity that kept me from killing the two wizards, who had so far kept their distance when I started my rampage. They would be a message to the dynast if they were clever enough to stay alive. I examined their clothes. Unusual. They had the armor chest plates of knights, but also donned the violet robes of spellcasters. Who are... That was my second mistake. A barrel of flames had cut me off as it fired into my chest. I stood still, expecting the spell to have no effect, as they had so many times before. But it seared my flesh and exposed bone. I reeled back in anguish, placing my palms to the ground and sending out a shockwave that sent the inferno hurtling back toward the spellcasters, who both leapt out the way. Brother, we've wounded him! Ah, what a joke! A mortal bitch! Did your phylactery break? <laughs> I clenched my fists tighter as the shards of glass cut deeper into my skin. They were not afraid of me, but they would be soon enough. I went to strike them down with my dark magic when the wizards unleashed another blaze in front of me. I pulled myself back, jumped into the air and launched myself onto one of the crumbling castle walls. Balancing myself against the stone, I waited for their next move. When I broke my phylactery, a part of my soul was released back into my body, and the wizards were catching on, or at least suspected. They were huddled up together, they claimed to be brothers, and indeed, their blue eyes and rounded cheeks denoted some form of familiarity. I, however, could not read their lips in the dark. I glanced at the sparkling treasure hoard through an opening in the castle's foundation and with a flick of a wrist, bought a charm emanating with a vibrant blue smoke forward. I crushed the trinket in my hand and held it up to my ear. Now their voices were as clear as day. Bedlam is vulnerable, you know what that means, don't you? Of course! Not only is his body capable of being harmed, but his very soul! Nikolai! Do you imagine the power we could wield? With that magic, Seras, we could bring back mother and father. <laughs> what fools. My third mistake was to sit around while they deliberated. But who could blame a lich who wanted to play a bit of cat and mouse? After all, an everlasting existence needs a little entertainment. My attention only caught the strange pendant in Nikolai's hand when it was too late. Blue fog zipped from the pendant to me, grabbing my frame and tearing me within an inch of him. Ceres, with his hungry grin, 
cut open my arm with sudden force. My blood splattered onto a small book in the spellcaster's free hand. He threw it to his brother right before I dug my fingers into his chest. Ceres let up a screech as I ripped his heart from his body. Brother! No! You'll pay for this! <sighs> Another life cut short. I didn't think this one would be snuffed out so violently. Yet I suppose you have an appetite for gruesome deaths. I gave them a moment to consider their allegiance before they hold fire at me, didn't I? Nikolai opened the bloodied book again. In my pained rage, I could still see the words lit up. A deep red glow flowed from the grimoire into him. I tried to move forward, but an invisible force kept me standing still. I could feel my power being sapped, slowly draining from my already bloodied body. I shut my eyes. When they fluttered open, the same man stood there. Only now, the exposed sinew and bone, and the black, soulless eyes of a leech. Well, you've become an ugly version of myself. Congratulations. <sighs> At least I am stronger. I slipped out of the way just in time, as he tried to land his first blow. But I was too slow for the second fist. There was a sickening crack. His bone and tissue buckled under the pressure. Pain bloomed, and my vision turned red for a brief moment. Before I realized I had been pushed back. With my strength and magic depleted, I defended myself the only way I could think of. I pinched out one of the shards of glass in my hand and threw it as hard as I could. The glass bounced off the new lich's arms and landed on the ground. Pathetic. How the mighty have fallen. The spellcaster merely sent another blow to my stomach, and within moments I was hurtling through the air. I crashed through rock and old cement until I landed on the floor of my treasure room. Hello again. This battle does not seem to be going too well for you. In the corner of my eye, I noticed a glowing vial. A potion of vitality. It was my only hope left. As the new lich slammed into the already fragile foundation of the tower, I violently smashed the lamp. As the spirit's true form slowly materialized, I scrambled towards the vial and managed to secretly down the contents. Spirit was barely a word that encapsulated the breadth of the creature. It floated in the air, high above the castle, the size of its body dwarfing it tenfold. Smoke ran from the tips of the spirit's hands and reached down to the wizard. They wrapped around him, dragging him up the castle. I am the Fipple, destroyer of annoying people. Good luck with them. It took everything I had to beat them the first time round, and I actually knew what I was doing. <laughs> but then, snaking tendrils of smoke wrapped around my body too, carrying me up alongside the spellcaster. What in the nine hells are you planning? I told you I'd kill you. Very well. I brought up my hand and casually waved away the smoke, 
dropping to the floor gracefully. I do not remember letting you go. You didn't. I've just had enough. The spirit dropped Nikolai with a shudder and began to shrink slowly back into the lamp, which was quickly beating itself together. I snarled and Zvipul finally sank all the way back into the tiny lamp. As for you... What? The, the book should have transferred all your power to me? Please, don't kid yourself. You really think some old grimoire can take the power of an almighty being? I just willingly handed over a small fraction of my strength to spice things up a bit. With that, I raised a hand and beheaded the poor wizard. Black blood diluted due to his inferior mortal heritage splattered from his severed neck. Shame about your family, though. Playing with your prey and then mocking their loss. How banal. <laughs> oh, my husband. You speak as though you are the goddess of retribution and vengeance. <laughs> so, you never actually lost control? Of course not. I'm Bedlam the Lich, not Bedlam the Warlock, or certainly not Bedlam the Sorcerer. And by the way, I don't appreciate your attempt on my life. The fourth mistake. I clenched my fists. Another shard of glass dug deeper into my palm. Damn it! Oops. You would think you would have learned by now. Silence! So you tell us the story of your gruesome conquests, thinking you would impress us. You were the goddess of retribution and vengeance. I thought some carnage would excite you. Carnage is one thing, but this... This was spiteful slaughter. You killed everyone, peasants and knights alike, when they came to you demanding a fair trial. I wouldn't say fair, husband. You know the dynast. You would have had him tortured, until you revealed where the rest of his phylacteries were. That is how you died, correct? Well, I wasn't killed by that dynast, but the one after him. Another delightfully skilled archmage was hired to predispose of me while I was away from my castle. It happened one day when... Does it truly matter how you died when your life was so unsatisfactory and yet so long? To die alone after so many years? I think even a hooked horror would have made more friends. Husband, I disagree. He was protecting himself. You take pity on what he was before. We both know he was weak and humiliated by his peers and wanted vengeance. There are less petty ways to get what you desire. He had a choice. Bedlam murdered people who were genuinely terrified of him. He took trophies from his conquests and kept them in his lich's hoard of treasure. And what of the orphan brothers he killed? Evil defending itself is still evil. If I thought every lich was evil, I would have never married you. And he could be useful. He uses dark magic, Aerith. Are you saying what I do with my magic isn't dark, my love? I forgave your indulgence of Diana. She was an innocent, used against a specific target. But this one... Can you not comprehend what we have in our presence, wife? Our patrons cannot stand him. Clearly, no one can stand him. And yet you wish to bring him back to the realms of the living? He should be condemned to an eternity of regrets. <laughs> what a pretty performance. Unfortunately, I don't have all day to play with the gods. Let me return to my castle, or you will regret it. 
That'll show them. Enough! Be gone! Damn it! Oh my. It seems our keepers are having a bit of a tiff. Feathers have been ruffled. Liches have been, uh, disintegrated. What did you think of our newest patron? Did he deserve his fate? Or was he simply protecting what belonged to him? It, uh, seems that we might have to clean up the tavern. The tables have been thrown. Bottles have been broken over heads. I am needed elsewhere. Uh, <laughs> Hopefully you might hear another fable, fable from, from the, the Forgotten. forgotten. Fuck! Oh! The bucket! Oh! Not these papers! It's so damn messy! Oh! Oh man! I gotta get these papers. It's so damn messy! Ah! Oh, I'm glad I saved this one. <laughs> the Lich. Huh. Written by Rita Phillips. Script adaptation by Hannah Stoltz. Music by ASCII Orchestral and Ambient Music. And David Fesslian. Hmm. Aristocrat. Produced by Dungeon Studios. Thanks for the employment. Directed by Josh McGinnis and Michael Riley. Yeah, you know, we all know they're butt buddies. All right. Everybody knows in the office, but nobody says anything. Edited by Michael Riley. Starring Tyree Mapson as Alabaster the Host. Hannah Stoltz as Aerith. Tim Roberts as Oregon. Oh, oh. I got an organ for you, bud. <laughs> Sam Quintenton as the Lich. Sophia Stefanovich as Zifipu. Bailey Martin as Dame Afrain. The Upright Man as Saris. William Lenham as Nikolai. I do like the Call of Duty dude. Yeah, I gotta listen to these someday. Working here all these years. Michael Riley as Singing Townsfolk. Man, he's probably the top. <laughs> alright, alright, that's enough of this. I gotta get going. I gotta clock out. It's about that time.